from the GeoNIDEA homepage, click to access global data. Zoom and pan to an area that you're interested in mapping. Maybe it comes from your own data sets or from the Fair Geo global map. I'm going to zoom into my local area and come all the way in to one of my local beaches. You can see I have three data sets to choose from. I can start annotating the map with my own insights now by activating the draw layers tool or what I'm going to do is to go all the way into a particular data set. This allows me to check the metadata of that data and then go ahead as I map. Now what I'm particularly interested in is this area of mangrove dieback that we see in the image. So I'm going to activate the drawing tool and start measuring the area that contains the dead mangroves. So you see on the left hand side we have the image that I'm looking to digitize and as I activated the drawing tool you'll see a new toolbar has come up the top. The area that I'm interested in with these mangroves is a polygon so I'm going to choose the polygon tool and I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing around the boundaries of this area of mangroves. When I finish my first shape, you'll see it appear over the left hand side in the table of contents. Now I can expand that table of contents and see the individual features that make up the layer. The first thing I'd like to do is to change the name of the layer so it's a little bit more informative. So I'm just going to click on that and change it to dead mangroves. The next thing I'm going to do is to play with the symbology. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the color patch to the left of the layer, and you'll see that I can change the outline color, the outline width, fill color and fill opacity as well. I'd like to be able to see more of the mangroves underneath, so I'm gonna drop that fill opacity. And I'm also going to increase the outline width a little bit more and change the color of that as well, so I want that a stronger color. So once I've done that, you'll see the changes apply, and then I'm going to click back on the layer so you'll see that it's highlighted here. I've got these strips at the top and the bottom of the name of the layer, which means that the next edit that I'm going to make is going to appear in that particular layer. So I've already got the polygon tool activated, and I'm going to go ahead and continue to digitize more of these dead mangrove areas. So you see that I now have a number of different features underneath the layer of my dead mangroves and they've been named accordingly. Now you can be as careful or with as lack of care as you like in terms of the digitizing. The more you zoom in the better result that you'll get in terms of getting nice smooth boundaries. Let's have a look at a couple of other things that you can do now that you've digitized a layer. So the first thing is that you can change the units of measurement so you'll see that in the, with the polygon, there are areas that are captured here for each of these different shapes. So we've got uh, two, 2,281 meters squared, for example, and then you can see that all of these add up to the total amount here. So 2,897 for all of the polygons in total. Now, when you've got really large shapes, you can also click on them. You can click on it now and it's going to give you the kilometer squared. So as we've got really such small shapes, it doesn't make sense to keep it in kilometers squared, but now you know how to, how to do that. For each of these shapes, you can also toggle their visibility. So as you hover over it, you'll see the little eye patch appear. Now, as I click on that, you'll see the shape disappear. So it hasn't been deleted, but it's just hidden for the moment. If you did want to delete the shape, however, you can just click on the three dots on the right hand side of that shape. You can zoom to the feature if you like, hide labels or delete it. So with the labels, you'll see that when you zoom all the way in, you can see the little text there labeling what that shape is called. So you can hide those or make those active at the, at the individual feature level, but you can also do that from the layer level as well. So again, we can also turn the entire layer off, on, and we also have the additional options here as well. So we can zoom to the layer if we're all the way out, we want to come back into it, we can hide all the labels. We can also lock it from editing if you don't want to continue editing with that. And you can also delete the layer from this point as well. Now that you've created some hard work here, I guess probably one of the most important things to do is we really want to be able to save what we're going on with. So up in the top right hand corner, you need to, you need to have logged in with your account, but then you can click on save. Now, as we do this, you can either choose from an existing project that you have or to go ahead and create a new project and then go ahead and click create. Now you'll see that this project that you have created is stored over on the left hand side here under my projects. It appears the same. So we've got the layer, which is the drone imagery that we've been working on and the polygons that we've been digitizing. We can go ahead and continue to digitize on the top of this.
But one other thing I'd like to bring your attention to is so down the bottom it says, hey, there's two more drone data sets in this area that you might be interested in looking at as well. And that will change as we zoom in and out and the database is aware of the data sets that you're interested in looking at. So what I'm now going to do is I'm actually go going to go and bring in some of those other data sets that uh, can have been captured over the same area. You can see there's two data sets listed, but I already have the October data set. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit further because I think there's a third data set as well. Now we see all three data sets. What I'm going to do is actually add the additional ones to my project. So there's the January data set I'm going to add, and then the November data set I'm going to do the same. Once I've added all the data sets that I need, I'm going to go back to my projects and jump right on in. You'll see that we now have all three data sets listed in the table of contents. We can also zoom out to see them load their author mosaics. With the ability to toggle the data sets on and off in the table of contents, you can see how different features change over time. So in particular, look at the November data where a fire had just passed through the area here. And in January, the area had recovered and it was significantly greener. If you would like to export individual layers, you can easily do that through the drop down option. Or if you've got multiple layers that you want to export together, you can do so over here. At any stage, you can change the name of your project by simply clicking on it in the top menu bar. You can also change other metadata details through the drop down box in the top right. Here you'll see the project name, a description which we haven't entered yet, and a bunch of tags that have come across from the original data sets that's held those. It's also kept the category that's been assigned to those data sets. Let's go in and add a description and also change the cover image. In the description field, I'm going to add some information about this particular project. And then I'm going to add a nice cover image that makes it easier to identify the different projects I'm working on. Once you've added in those details, you can simply close that. Now, if we go back to the My Projects area, you'll be able to see that we have all that information in the projects card. Now, as you gain more and more projects, you'll see that you have the footprint for each project appearing there. So if you've got projects all over the world, you'll have a global view with various footprints. You can toggle that on and off as well if you would like to do that. You can also access a range of other options through the drop down menu here. So the project details is what we were just looking at where we changed the name and the description. You can duplicate the project and you're also able to delete it from here. I look forward to the projects that you create.